So I think it's kind of generally accepted and known by the community that Max last a very, very long time as you can run an OS that's only a couple years old on a Mac that's 10 years old. And if you upgrade it, that makes stuff run even better. And that's the case with this Mac. So this Mac is a mid-2012 MacBook Pro, I believe it's the 15-inch model as well, but it's been upgraded even further. So instead of the 4 gigs of RAM that it probably had, it has 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Uh, it also has an incredibly fast 480 gig SSD, and this thing runs like a beast for its age. It is it's pretty decently fast and I've even edited a couple videos on there because it still holds up really well today. But with all these specs it can't natively run the latest OS's but by using random hacky methods that I'm not going to get into right now you can run those latest OS's but the problem is they run perfectly. So why don't these Macs natively support them? Well, it's a good question. Apple is all about making things simple for people, and if they can't support the baseline models of something, then they're not gonna support it at all. Really because they don't want a bunch of technical specifications and lots of random confusing bits for the general public. Instead of just putting, okay, you can support this and run this if you have an upgraded model and yada yada yada, they just put, okay, yeah, you can't run this at all natively. And then they don't block the, you know, the outside developers of making a software that can run it anyway. I really wish they support this anyway because this runs really well on mac os ventura which by the way is only supported by macs that are uh, 2017 and newer this thing runs really well and while the battery life is terrible that's only because it's old and batteries get worse with time this thing's it, it runs really well but also i have windows 11 installed on this machine which not only is it a mac but also the CPU, TPM, this Mac doesn't have anything that supports Windows 11, yet it runs just as good as Windows 10 and just about as good as Mac OS. It runs really well. Windows has those technical random specifications that no one will understand. So why can't it run this? Well, I'm not going to dive too much into that topic for this video, but I do want to find out how well does this hold up in 2023, almost 11 years later. First, we went into Geekbench and we ran a CPU test to see how the CPU would stack up today, because it's a really fast CPU. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this video. So we compared it to Jake's computer, which is behind me. Uh, we tested it and the Mac got a score of 2700 and uh, Jake's got around 5400 or 5200. So, so I know that seems like a lot, like one is half of the other, but again, that's a 10 year old computer there and that's only a two year old computer. And the, the fact that it's only half, and this is a really nice computer, um, it means that you can still do a lot of stuff, like it's still in decent shape. So next, we ran um, a harder test. Um, can it run Minecraft Java Edition at high settings with shaders? Let's find out. So it actually did surprisingly okay. All max settings in Optifine 1.19.2 without shaders, it actually ran pretty decently. Uh, the FPS was not stable though, so we'd get a range of around 50 to 120 FPS depending on how, what we were doing in the game. If we were standing still, we'd get around 100, but, you know, if we were flying around generating chunks, then, uh, we'd get a bit less, around 50 or 60. Now, with shaders, and we turned on anti-aliasing too, we actually got around 20 or 30 FPS. It was, it was bad. So it ranged from about 10 to 20, which honestly is a little better than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be uh, at a max of 15, and it actually doubled that max. If we turned render distance and simulation down to its lowest setting, wood shaders and everything else, we got 30 or 40 FPS, which 
isn't that bad comparatively. So could you game on this? Yes! Let's compare it to this other computer, which has, what is it, 1660 Super? 1650 Super. Let's try it. So the PC results were actually pretty surprising when compared to the Mac results. So with shaders and all Mac settings, we got about 30 FPS. Which, I know what you're thinking, oh, that's just the same as the Mac. This was a lot more stable. The Mac FPS ranged and changed so frequently. This, while it did change some, it didn't change more than 7 FPS when we were doing things. So it's, it was very much more stable. It was much more stable. But with shaders off, it got, it again, it was more stable, but it was only at around 80 or 90 FPS, which the Mac did better than that. So it's pretty crazy that the Mac can almost perform just as well as this, except with editing. So editing is pretty good on there, and with DaVinci Resolve, I've noticed it does a bit better than running Premiere Pro. But it's not, it's not perfect, it's still okay. So I think the conclusion to this is that while upgraded Macs are still old and may not run as well as the newest and best stuff, they're still pretty good. And it's definitely still a definite option if you are looking for a cheap Mac um, to use. You don't have to go and spend $1,000 on an M2 Mac. Just go and pick one of these up for $200 or even $300 on eBay. Then maybe upgrade it a little and there you have powerhouse machine that you can take with you travel if you need to uh, do something every now and then. And because it's a Mac, it hooks up to Apple's entire ecosystem. So if you have a phone, watch, an iPad, it still syncs with those so very well, even despite its age. It just does everything really well. It can send messages from my phone texting on the Mac. It can FaceTime using my Apple ID, and it can even locate my other Apple devices and ping in. It just works so well with Apple's ecosystem that it's still a very viable option to take. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and uh, please like and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos right here and uh, right here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.